created like a, an oval egg shape to do a face. And I'm going to do a whimsy girl. Or it could be a boy. So I'm just putting in the features here. I'm using a water soluble pen. So I'm going to imagine there's a, a line coming down the center of this shape here and a line halfway across here and then this will be the center point of those intersecting lines. So then between this point and this point we want to go halfway here and then same for here. So we're going to go halfway here, halfway here and then we can start to just make like a an oval shape for the eyes. An oval shape. of the ears. Okay, so between this dot and this point here, we come halfway. So this will be generally the tip of the nose. And then between the chin and this point, we want to come halfway. kind of look that you want. You could go for a manga style um, anime, you know, give it some funky hair or punk, punk it up. But I'm going for a, a whimsy style girl. I really enjoy paint, painting those. And then for the hair, she's going to have some 
long flowing hair. Let's bring the height up here. Same on this side, so having a hair come down around, just giving it a bit of height. She's got a lot of hair, and you can see her coming together. Probably go in with a different colour there anyway, so I'll just zoom in a little bit for you. Zoom in, you can see a bit closer. What I'm doing the features on the face. Yeah, you kind of get the picture. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some pieces of paper. You don't really need to worry too much um, yeah. about detail on the face at this moment. So I've just got some scrap pieces of paper um, that are double sided and got some bruises on them. So I'm going to rip them up roughly. Got these pieces of paper placed out now. You're following me? Yep, so I'm going to use some um, some medium which I've actually made up myself, it's matte medium, and I used, um, what did I use in it? Watered down PVC, yeah PVC glue. It seems to do the job. I'm just giving it a good shake. It's, it's been a while since I've used it, so yeah, I'm just going to apply it straight onto the to the paper. Um, I'm a fingers kind of girl. Get my fingers in there. It does make your hands messy, but I don't mind that. And. Be careful of the table. No, it's it's the yeah. Sorry about that. You can still see okay. Yeah, it's just um, get it on the paper. It's smelling a bit stinky. Oops. So you want to get it underneath the paper and on top of the paper, right? So that it's all over.
So now what I've done is I've just picked some of these Neo Color 2 Caran uh water soluble wax pastels and I'm going to use these to create a bit of a background in some blocks of color. So I'll just go in and just randomly lay it down. You can see that I haven't waited long enough. My uh, medium is still activating the crayon. So a bit down here. It doesn't matter what it looks like because it's going to be blended and I'll wet it down. filbert I think it is paintbrush and I get my water spray and spray it as you can see it's already starting to activate and I'm going to go from the, the darker colors just blending it all together activating it It's dissolving the crayon to become a watercolour. Texturising it a little bit using the brush. Yeah. I've got my son sitting beside me doing his own version as I'm talking through this. So if you can hear any noises, that's him over there busily working away. He's a creative like his mama. Not too much, mate. Just just enough. That, yep, that's good. Yeah, you've got a lot of water over here. Just had to get in that extra spray, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. And just washing out my brush. There we go. what's happening in the household today kids are home from school because of what's happening in the world mm. so, yeah, you can't you can't rub it um you just like as as i'm working it's sort of more in a, a dabbing motion as you can see there i've just probably put too much water on i didn't tap my brush out so i'll just take the excess off there and um, just put it down. Just, if you have any excess water, just grab some paper towel and you can just dab it. And that also just adds some texture. Yeah, quite nicely. So, blend it in a little bit over here. Yeah. So if you can hear the little screamer in the background, that's my daughter. She's um, playing a game with one of her friends on a device. So she's um, still getting to have some playtime with the friends, which is great. Because they are missing school for the socialising aspect. Okay, now that's my blues done. 
remember to dry my brush this time because my paper is still quite activated from spraying on the water before. So that has soaked into the watercolour paper a little bit. But that's okay. So I'm just getting out some of the kind of I do want that yellow just to really stand out and be bright. Yeah. Finish that up there. It seems to be all nicely. Blending that out a little bit so it's not such hard lines. There we go. Bit over here that I missed. It's okay. Just hold it up a little bit when you're spraying your, your water spray, just so that it just lightly mists the paper. You're not creating massive puddles on the paper. You just want it to just spritz across the page. So I'm going to go in and sort of just work some of this colour in. Um, just loosely. Just getting a base down this watercolour. Some more water on my brush. Just dip it in the brush tub. So I'll probably go in um, a little later and definitely create some more depth in this face here and just to define it some more but I'm liking this this color magenta color that I'm using here I'm gonna grab a smaller brush um, and firstly I am going to bring this yellow, I think, down into her clothing. So, just to balance it out a little bit. And just going to have a different coloured collar. Maybe we can use the light blue as a collar. Blend that one out. Here we go. So I really use this process of painting as quite a meditative process. I'm, I'm just going to bring some of this yellow up into her face as I can. It might change later. I'll blend it out a little bit. this pencil that I laid down before on her face is quite a, a yellowy colour anyway so do I just activate it all just not worrying about it all being perfect and concise because we're, this is just laying a foundation we're going to go in over this a little later with some pencils so and maybe some charcoal or some graphite whichever I can find first
getting the foundation down and then we'll start to add some more layers and depth and some text and maybe some stamps. Uh, we'll just see what, what wants to come through. What we're going to be doing now is I'm just going to mute out some of this colour here with some gesso. I'll include a list of all of the items that I'm using at the bottom of this tutorial but this is a Liquitex gesso which is a primer and I'm just going to take my shaggy smushy brush get a bit of gesso just using a bit of water to um, mute it out a little bit I guess that's probably the word I'm looking for but just gonna be putting it loosely not going for perfectionism just muting out some of these colors just I actually didn't pick up any more of the gesso then I just uh, wet the brush a little bit more so the water will also be reactivating the crayon even though it has dried so just try to dab rather than um, use brush strokes just creating some texture and contrast to the painting. The hair will be coming over here. So just meet that out a little bit there. It kind of helps, I think, that my brush is like really, really smushy by smushy I mean a shaggy brush it has not been looked after at all it's been worked and maybe not so much loved but I love that it actually gives me this um, opportunity then to create a bit of texture and contrast to my design to the background I'm actually feeling that I want to put some stamps into the background. Uh, so one thing I just do want to mention, um, I've just gone and found some stamps that I want to use. I have some clear stamps, uh, you can see here. Though I have already chosen one which is a butterfly one and I couldn't find my clear my large clear stamp block so this is the small one that I have I do have a larger one but I'm all about improvising so I'm just going to share with you what I've done had my phone here and I'm going to use my phone it's I'm going to use the back of my phone so this will actually stick to the back of the phone. I've used old CDs as well. Um, anything basically that has a flat surface you can use. It'll stick to it. You can wash these when you finish and they will re-stick. So I've chosen a archival ink. This is, sorry I'll turn it around so we can see, a cobalt blue as opposed to a black and I'm just going to rub it over the stamp. I actually might press it in to get a bit more ink activation happening there. Because I'm going straight down with the pressure, it's not actually touching my phone case at all. Not that I would be bothered if it did. And I'm then just going to place it somewhere on the painting. Go over here, I think. So, um, 
And I'm going to put another one just half off the page over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I do have another little one. Just going to wipe that off. The excess paint. Usually what I do if I'm working in a journal and I have excess ink left on my stamps, I'll just open the pages up and generally I have other pages in a journal that I've, um, I use excess paint. Like, so if I'm using a palette like this, I'll just turn it to a page in my journal and wipe it onto the page so that I'm not wasting. So I'm just gonna put this one away now. Over here, it goes back on here. And whoops, but I I um when I was searching for my ink stamps I came across some of my ink of gold which I would really like to use as well for some texture and um discovered that it had actually dried in the pot. So um I've just topped it up with some water and broken it all up and I'm hoping that it will reactivate. I'll give it, I'll probably have to work it um, to get it to uh, the paste that it, that it usually is. So I'm just going to let it sit for a bit and see how I go with it. Um, but I would like to do some stenciling in the background. I also came across some ink sprays as well. So might have a little bit of a play with that. And um, I'll do her hair first before I do that because I'll, I could do some drips down the page. So I don't want to have too much, but yeah, keeping it loose and messy as well. So just being and feeling inspired. So I'm just going to go and put some color into her hair. I've got some colors here and this one is, um, just don't have my glasses on, the writing's really small. Turn it the right way. This is a purplish red which is similar to the, um, the crim crimson red that I used to draw her out of the pencil. Just bringing in some bolder colour. I'll we'll just bring this around so it's more defined. Normally using this kind of paper um, I tape it down, but I was being lazy today, so it's not taped down. So I'm just bringing this colour through to intensify it. And I'm going to use a raspberry red. It's a really pretty pinky color. Maybe put in some undertones here of some purpley colors, we'll see. This one here is Cobalt Violet. So usually the hair underneath is a bit darker. I'm still doing it quite messy. She's going to have this two-toned hair, I guess. I'm just going to work this, <clears throat> excuse me, use my smushy brush to activate this colour.
detail here just on her clothing. This here is an indigo blue. And I'm just going to go and define her eyes a little bit more. Help her to stand out on the page. Normally, I would take down my watercolor paper, but I didn't today. I'm taking an indigo blue and I'm going to white neo color but you could also use gesso 
uh, or a Posca penny. So we'll go in with some watercolor pen. Sorry, an aqua brush and some gesso. I'm just blending it out from the edges. Even. So that's what's happening there. So I'm just going to have to do it layer upon layer with the primer, with the gesso here. It's just the wetness of the gesso is actually reactivating the crayon. So I just want to kind of create a bit of a halo around her, a halo effect. Just cleaned off this brush. I'm gonna grab a paper towel just to wipe it off. I'm just gonna blend out the edges here. Usually I would actually seal this so that I could rework it. But it's okay, it's blending, which is fine. Just go with it. It's not really sort of taking on the um the halo effect I was after, but to just come in with um, some more of the 
these colours here just to intensify. And add some highlights or contrast. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. I like this colour. This is the, um, oh, it's scarlet. I thought that it was the raspberry. I'm using, I'm using the raspberry here. That must be this one here. Yeah. So another really cool thing about the Caran d'Ache is you can blend it as well just by, my fingers are dry, but just to get rid of the, the crayon sort of effect and smooth it out because it is so soft. And it's probably activating with the oils in my fingers or reacting with the, the moisture, the oils in my fingers. I really like that look. It's just kind of muting it out a little bit. It looks really nice. A bit of that in there. Some more pink here. I'm going to put some more of that sort of magenta. What was this colour again? It was um, purplish red. I love purple, it's one of my favourite colours. But I also love yellow too. Actually, what's my favourite colour? My favourite colour is rainbow. <laughs> I get asked that often. What's your favourite colour? So I make a point of asking people that too. I don't usually say rainbow, but that is an answer that I'm often given, rainbow. Some intensifying. Bringing out some boldness of colour here. Just smoothing it out. And trying not to get too much on her face. I'm going to do a bit of detail with um, some black soon, but I am actually going to um, set the page by using a matte spray, a matte varnish to seal it so that I can come in and um, rework it without the colour underneath reactivating. Something's right there. And so that when I'm doing the details, it actually goes over the crayon. Because it doesn't usually like having colour put over the top of it.
So let's see if I can find my... What I usually use is a Posca pen. Um, because I have actually sealed the page, but I cannot find my black Posca. It's gone missing. This one's too thick. Give it a crack. See how it goes. It. Hey. Okay. So while that is still wet, let me get my aqua brush, which is right there in front of me. And just blend it out. Okay. I'm just going to get a little bit of this watered down that I've splotched onto a piece of paper here and hope it's not too harsh and just Come in here.
Nari Anastasia and actually had pulled one that was Ascension but well, because I actually haven't shuffled the cards I'm going to just tune in here and give them a good shuffle There you go, eyes, eyelashes. Creation. It's a pretty perfect card. Being creative is a wonderful way to witness the unfolding of your limitless creative soul. So that seems like a pretty cool thing to include. I'm gonna sketch it out first actually. I think that's probably the best idea and I'm going to use a watercolour pencil. I'm using a watercolour there, a Derwent Intense. This is Indian ink. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to begin writing my word. 